Hello everyone, I'm Ron Grant coming to you live and direct from Tortola in the Virgin Islands. You're watching 284 Media, Journey to Elections 2023, of course. It's on its way and we are featuring all candidates, whether independent or party affiliated, for our Just for the Record series. Today we are joined by Mrs. Lorna Smith, OBE, who is an at-large candidate in the 2023 general elections. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. many ways to enjoy life like so many ways to count on popular Rashford made it Manchester United and come from behind to lead at home or on the go watch CCT live download our app and carry your favorite TV shows news or live sports anywhere you go visit cctbvi.com forward slash live select your package and tune in Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. Welcome back, everyone. As promised, you are watching Just for the Record, and we are joined by Mrs. Lorna Smith, OBE. Mrs. Smith, thank you for your time, and welcome to our studios. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to be here. It is an absolute pleasure to have you as well. Just for the record, it would appear that your declaration uh, to represent the people in the 2023 general elections came as a surprise to some. Just for the record, there have been a lot of concerns since you have declared. Many persons said uh, you are older in age. My research says that you are 70. Am I correct? Yes, I okay. am 70. Um, and with that uh, age, there are persons who feel as though, why would she run at uh, uh, age 70? When you hear, if you have heard those, those, those concerns, what do you say to the persons that think because of your age, you should perhaps not run or in their mind are disqualified? Ron, there are several reasons why I decided to run at age 70. In terms of my age, yes, I'm age 70 and I'm very proud of my age. I'm proud of my experience. I'm proud of the fact that I have worked with leaders in this territory, such as the late Honorable H.L. Stout, uh, Honorable Cyril Romney, who's also passed, uh, Dr. Dio Smith, Honorable Conrad Maduro, and so many others. I would not want to swap that experience with anything. And so, as far as I'm concerned, age is purely a number. It's the energy that you bring, it's the confidence, it's the ability to perform. And Sometimes I wonder whether it's a, a, a chauvinistic question mm -hmm. because there are other people in the race that are my age. Correct. People I've gone to school with, virtually sat in a bench with, and these questions have not been raised to them. So as far as I'm concerned, age is a number. I have the ability. I have the confidence. I have the experience and I have the strength to represent the people of the British Virgin Islands. So I'm very pleased to be running at this time without apology. And when you look at, at persons beyond, I mean, we've, we're talking about the British Virgin Islands, mm -hmm. but you look at persons beyond the British Virgin Islands, you look in the Caribbean, the Prime Minister of St. Vincent taught me at university. Uh, you look in the United States, how old is President Biden? That's correct. How old is, is, is former President Trump? So what's, what's the big deal about this? I think I've proven, I, I run every, every year in the college classics. I beat a lot of people your <laughs> age, Ron, and, and younger. So okay. it really is not a, a big deal for, it, it, it ought not to be an issue. And I hope that it can be put to bed and people will judge me on the basis of my ability, on the basis of my experience, and on the, on the, the basis of, of my strength 
to contribute to the British Virgin Islands and its development. Speaking of track record, while there are those sentiments, there are other sentiments as well that I have, uh, persons have heard, um, I have heard myself, and they say she's exactly what we need at this time. We are in a very tough place, and someone like Lorna Smith can get us out of it. What do you say to those sentiments as well? Well, I am grateful for those sentiments. I think that it is the right time for me to, to run. As I was saying in, the, in response to the first question you raised, I do have that very broad experience. I have that, that strength that I can really assist the country in moving forward. My experience has been very broad. I started out working in the Ministry of Natural Resources and we won awards then in, 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 in the area of the environment. And then the, the then Chief Minister, now called Premier, tapped me and asked that I work with him on establishing the college because we shared the same vision. And the college now bears his name. But I, I didn't just work in, in helping him to establish the college. I worked in a number of areas. I worked in tourism as his permanent secretary. I worked in trade and, and development. I worked in just so, so many areas that came under, under the, 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 the purview of the, the ministry, international relations. In fact, uh, I advised the, the chief minister, uh, both him and Mr. Romney at the time, it was I who advised them, that we should just broaden our footprint Go beyond just BVI. Let's look at joining the OECS. They weren't going to take us as a full member, but as an associate member. The same with CARICOM mm -hmm. and all the UN agencies. So that was my, my advice. Of course, I couldn't take the decision, but it was my best advice to them. And then, of course, we were working with all the the international organizations in financial services. I worked very closely with the Ministry of Finance. At the time, Robert Mathavius was there, and then we had a Department of Financial Service, of, yes, Financial Services that was established, that he subsequently headed, and that subsequently became the Financial Services Commission. Correct. I, too, moved on from all the things that I did in the Premier's office, and I was the first head of the, what was then called the BVI International Finance Center. And that was established in 2002. And uh, then I, I worked there until 2007. And I've since then worked in financial services. And I am steeped. I, I, I really enjoy the area of, of financial services. Yes, Why? we're going to get to that. Because, okay, so... But, but that is, that is a, a little vina, if you want to call it that, a little bit of my experience in, in, uh, in the BVI, in the, the public service, if you want to Absolutely. call it that. Absolutely. And private course. as well, because you yes, are, and, uh, and private. correct me if I'm wrong, you are, you do have your own business. I have my own business, that is, that is correct. And of course, uh, I established both the Hong Kong and... Um, and uh, London offices and these are the offices that really bring bring the business in financial services that enable us as a country to live at the level that we do because as you know financial services uh, in terms of government revenue it contributes what 60 something percent of government revenue 60 something cents out of every dollar Okay. comes from financial services. Well, we're going to get to so, financial services, right. but be before we get there, um, speaking of interpretations from the community, the younger persons uh, would say, some have echoed, uh, that she doesn't speak to us. Uh, she, she seems, as in, in, in layman's term, stuck up. When you, when you hear that type of 
description, particularly from the younger persons, because I know you've done some work with the young people through Road Rack and other organizations, mm -hmm. but address that misconception that Lorna Smith is not a people's person. Ron, I, I'm so glad we're doing this interview because people need to know where I came from. Mm. I came from Huntam Scott. I, when, I, when, when we started, when my mother built her house, uh, two rooms that became a three-room house, and we did not even have electricity. I had to, to bring water from a well that was sometimes a, a mile away, depending on whether there was water in the one that was closer or not. And that was, we didn't even have a, a cistern. I grew up very humbly. A lot of people say, and it is true, we didn't even realize that we were poor hmm. because we could eat and we could drink and, and so on. But I was very, it, was, it was very humble. It was a very humble growing up experience for me. And I was poor. And I'm not rich right now. And I, I love the fact that it's been an experience where the, the village raised me, you know. I grew up with the, the Smiths, Liston Smith, um, uh, Wade Smith's mother. Those people are the people who, when my mother had to go to work with uh, Mr. Roland Hodge and, and other people, uh, those were the people who made sure that I went to school and um, came back home and behaved myself, as they would say. In terms of young people and the fact that they don't feel connected to me, because that's what I interpret you, mm -hmm. you're saying, <clears throat> I, want to, I, I, I want to change that perception. I have every time worked, all the time worked with young people. You mentioned Rotaract and so on, the Youth Empowerment Program. I have worked mentoring uh, with mentoring young professionals. Uh, in fact, when I left the Premier's office or the Chief Minister's office, I, I headed what, what was then called um, a professional development program for the public service. And at the time I mentored a number of young people mm -hmm. who have reached the top of the level, top of the, the public service. I, I have mentored people in the in the private sector, trust companies and so on. And it's something that I, I, I love to do. I have worked with young people in, in uh, entrepreneurship. There's an organization called The Forge that I am one of two directors of. Uh, I'm very proud to see some of the people, or like Alexandra Durant, um, Akeem Leonard, uh, Kristen Fraser too. These, these, these persons, I don't want to say they came through that system, but they benefited from that kind of, okay. of, of training. So I have worked with young people. I, I, I love the fact that I love to see what they're doing. I love to see what they're doing now. And um, I have some excellent plans if I'm elected, to continue to work with those young people. All right. Well, thank you for that. I need to go back to financial services. There is a memory that is etched in my mind and my memory uh, dating back to 2018. That's the record I have. When you sat before Dame Margaret Hodge and uh, the BBC. Yes. And many persons who did not know of you wondered, who was this feisty woman standing up? <laughs> to Dame Margaret Hodge and defending the territory when some very ugly things were being said about the territory on the front of financial services. So you've defended us and you continue to defend the country. But I want to go back to that moment a bit because not many persons have the grit and the know-how to defend when it comes to uh, such audiences. Tell me about that experience. Certainly, Ron. <laughs> it was a, it was, it was Quite an, an experience. Uh, first of all, I was not the person to be there. Okay. Uh, it was decided that it should be an OECS representative. But Dame Margaret said, no, 
I want to see, I want to speak with somebody from the British Virgin Islands. So I was literally awakened and, and told there's a car downstairs from the BBC, please, hmm. you know, come for the, the interview um, at about seven or eight o'clock in the morning. You know that I think it was Radio 4. Okay, yes, correct. And, um, and the first thing I did when I sat before her, sat across that, when I sat beside her, the interviewer was behind, was across from us. I looked at her and I said, De Margaret Hodge, I'm also a Hodge. Hmm. And that's all I said in relation to that. And then she started going on about BVI and all that, all the, what did she call it, dirty money? Yes, dirty money, tax haven. Tax haven and all that. I also talked to her, I've only seen recently just parts of the interview, but I also talked to her about the fact that I talked to her about Scotland and Scotland being able to do what they wanted to do. And I said, um, BVI, while not independent, uh, we are financially independent and we're not, a, we're not a sovereign country, but we wanted to have a level of sovereignty that we deserved. But then on the financial services front, what she was saying was completely wrong and repugnant. Okay. Uh, it was the sanctions and anti-money anti laundering bill that was going before the, the House of Lords, I think it was. And I thought it necessary to tell her that what she was saying was totally incorrect. I thought it necessary to tell her about how BVI is managed, the fact that our financial services are managed by a commission mm -hmm. that has gained international recognition and that is recognized everywhere for its compliance. Certainly, I said to her that in terms of not just the FSC, but in terms of the country, we had been deemed largely compliant by the Financial Action Task Force. We had been deemed, uh, in fact, compliant. We had been deemed largely compliant by the OECD and so on, straight down the, down the line. And so it was very unfair of her mm -hmm. to, to, make, to be making those baseless statements. And, uh, you know, we, we had a back and forth, but as I said, it was my responsibility and it's what I do everywhere, what I, I do now and what I did for many years to defend the reputation of the British Virgin Islands uh, in financial services especially because people don't, they, they don't, they don't want to understand what it is we do. And um, certainly in terms of, 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 of the country and, 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 and the contribution that, that financial services make, we are recognized globally Correct. as a leading jurisdiction and it was important to make that clear to her. I, I have to ask you in this present climate, uh, climate, uh, the Commission of Inquiry, which we're going to get into, with all that would be said about the territory on the international front, do you feel as though our sitting legislators are doing enough to defend the country? Stay tuned for more Just For The Record right after this. Yo, everything good, Dad? Why? This thing got me one way, Daddy. What you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What are you really? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home, keeping out that trouble, me. Wow. What's your name is? She? I talk about my city life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into, well, you know I huff. I watch him ball. I even watch him football. 
Dark, Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol. I am hook. Hook, I tell you. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer, Cole. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. I, I, I have to ask you in this present climate, uh, climate, uh, the commission of inquiry, which we're going to get into, with all that would be said about the territory on the international front, do you feel as though our sitting legislators are doing enough to defend the country? Well, let me talk about, about financial services first. Um, thankfully, uh, both I, the governor, I think, um, made it clear that in terms of the Commission of Inquiry, financial services was outside of the ambit of financial of the COI. COI. So that has been put that to one side and say that. And it speaks volumes. Been, yes, it speaks. It speaks volumes indeed, because the governor was, you know, he would be speaking on behalf of of the Foreign and Commonwealth Office and, and the United Kingdom. And the fact that they hold our financial services in, in, in very, very high esteem. So, so that, was, that, that, that was excellent. Uh, in terms of generally, uh, are the legislators doing enough? I think it's very important to implement the recommendations of the Commission of Inquiry. Uh, I do think that we should have had a holistic response to the report. Uh, that having not been done, I think we need, we have a, a responsibility, a duty to implement those recommendations. In regards to the 48 recommendations, the 48 do you believe that the sitting government can successfully implement all 48? Some have already been completed. Some have been completed. I think they would not be able to complete. But certainly I do think that a, an, another administration Successive government. Should, 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 should commit to it. Now, my concern also, Ron, is this. We should not be engaging in a tick-the-box exercise. Hmm. You know, a number of those recommendations need deep study, right? Uh, so we need, I don't know that we have spent enough time really looking, delving into, into how to best address these um, recommendations. But they must be solid and they must go beyond ticking the box. Uh, I believe that at the end of the day, we will end up with a stronger governance system. We will end up with greater transparency. And um, I think it's overall, it's a, it's a good thing to, to do. And in fact, a successive administration, and if I'm part of a successive administration, I certainly would commit, commit to making sure that those 48 recommendations are, are in fact uh, completed. completed. Okay. Thank you. Speaking of an administration, you began the race as an independent candidate and I want to talk, talk about your choice of coming out as an independent candidate and what has your decision be as it been as it pertains to uh, any alliances moving into the election? I take, take the first, uh, let, me take, let, me, let me take it in, in, in the way that you've, you've, you've asked it. I, yes, I started out as an independent candidate. I had heard people talking about both parties and there were concerns, frankly, about both parties. I thought it was necessary to listen to those concerns and 
It's interesting, Ron, that people, people have not held back in terms of their views on what should be done in the BVI. Um, and in being an independent party, in, in, an independent running as an independent, I thought I, people would be more, more frank in terms of their, their, their views. And I, I've, I've heard the gamut of, of their views. Uh, I, for instance, was doing, doing, one of the things I was doing was helping with voter registration. And my, my, my approach sometimes would be, how the country run it? Mm -hmm. And I remember one person said to me, how are you going to run when you're at the bottom of the, of the, of the sea? Hmm. Uh, it was an extreme response, mm -hmm. but generally I'm hearing, hearing these things that the country is not, is not running, running well. So I, I have been listening to these views. I have always listened. Listening is very important, but I've heard a number of, of, of views as an independent candidate. Now, I realize, Ron, that running a government requires teamwork. I, could, I don't want to, first of all, I don't want to offer promises that I cannot keep. I cannot offer promises as an individual. I mean, I just, as, solely as an individual, let me, let me put it that way. So, I have looked at, or oh, I, I, I should put it this, let me put it this way. The National Democratic Party is a party that closely reflects the views that I hold. Not in, 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 in all respects, but it, it, it does closely. My, my views and, 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 and those of the, the National Democratic Party do align closely. I do think that the National Democratic Party, and I do think they have accomplished a lot in the la over the last, uh, what, 20 years yes. or so. And, um, and so, given all those things, I have, I decided that I should join the National Democratic Party as a member. Understood. And you will be contesting the general elections? I as will a... be contesting the elections as a member of the National Democratic Party. Thank you for that. You talked about the space and time that we are in in our territory. You also, on the campaign trail and listening, mentioned a number of issues like cost of living. Mm -hmm. And I want to I, I touch on that. If elected, you talked about not making promises that you cannot keep. That has been a conversation, a conversation, a cost of living for uh, quite some time. And persons have, I think, prematurely promised the people that there would be a change. If elected, having that been one of your areas in addressing, how would you tackle that? And what can the people expect your efforts to be geared towards cost of living? Cost of living, Ron, is a, a huge issue for us. Uh, it's been aggravated, if you want to call it that, by the, the Ukraine war, mm -hmm. as you know, and all the, external, all the external factors. So people have little control over the cost of goods and, um, and services as well. Uh, it's, it's, a, a, a huge, it's a huge problem for the, for the BVI, and it's one of the, one of the problems that persons that I have talked with have seen or in fact have expressed as one of the, the biggest problems. Now, during the COVID period, or let me, let me say how I would address it uh, before I, I make this other point. But one of the things that I would, would, would do if I'm elected is to introduce uh, customs duty exemption on basic 
basic goods. Okay. I'm talking about what I call a basket of goods. Uh, rice, flour, mm -hmm. sugar, chicken, fish, and so on. And when I say an exemption, uh, it, it has to be passed down to the people who it's intended to benefit. Uh, because it, it cannot just stay at the, at the merchant level. Uh, I noticed, what I was going to say is that I noticed that uh, during COVID, there was a significant reduction yes. for about nine months, was it six or between six and nine months, in the, the um, customs duty on these same goods. And it cost about more than $11 million. Now, Ron, we have to look very carefully at the impact of doing this on government revenues, mm -hmm. because we don't, we can't afford for one area to to suffer, and another one benefits. So it requires a study. I am not going to just say we're going to do it tomorrow, but it has to be done. But even probably when while we're doing it, we have to look at how it would work and how it would how it would benefit, not just how it would benefit the, 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 the people who need it most, but how the country as a whole would, would benefit. While we're looking at that, we have to look at, at the cost of, of, of rents, for example. That is another area that, that is of concern to the, to the public. I mean, rents go sky high and people... The problem with, with the cost of living is that our wages did not increase. I'm happy you mentioned that. But the cost, yes, that's the crux. Yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd, like, I'd like to add here because I don't think uh, many persons know uh, the average salary across the territory is somewhere around thirty thousand dollars. You see. Stay tuned for more. Just for the record, right after this. One. Ah. Uh, yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. My name is Kamal Haynes. Most of you know me from 284 News, but now you get to see me in a different light on my very own show called Health is Well. We have Joel Turnbull. I don't want you to arch your back when you're pulling down. Milton McLean. First of all, right, your footwork. Stephen Payne. That was a 9 out of 10. I know you got the service down pat. Steve Augustine. He did a pretty hard workout today, so perhaps. And as you can see, it's actually. <laughs> you're feeling it. Lonzo Boynes. Taekwondo. Adam Morrells. I'll speak as if you're an absolute beginner. I am an absolute beginner. You are an absolute beginner. And Seth Graham. It bites. It will Everything bite. <laughs> get your water, get your fruits and veggies and experience a wealth of knowledge about getting healthy. shark research so today we are doing whale research with beyond the reef and wherever I go I take CCT with me because my life is unlimited welcome back thank you for joining us uh, persons tend to look at financial services, uh, but that does not necessarily trickle down in, in trickle our down area. Always, so yes. when the, the, the majority of the populace is making on average $30,000 $30, dollars And out of that $30,000 you have to pay every month, uh, what, a thousand dollars in rent and so on. And it's just, it's just beyond people's capacity to, to pay. And that's because of wages they really did not stay uh, stay in, 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 in concert with, with, with um, the, the price of food and, 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 and other costs like that. Okay. 
We have some other issues affecting us, such as crime. What is your take on the state of crime in the territory and how you would support uh, any level of legislation or otherwise to help curtail crime? Crime is a great concern uh, on many levels. We've seen an increase in the number of, of, of murders and serious crimes over the last um, few years, drugs as well. And I think we have to, to address it, address it head on. We have to, it's not just about legislation, I think we have a lot of legislation. It's about making sure that our police who are responsible for for enforcing and uh, making sure that, that crime is abated, making sure that they receive the, the proper training to cope with this huge problem of, of, of crime. We have to, to also, in addition to that, I know it's a small country with, what, 35,000 people? Yes. But uh, uh, many times, unless the public collaborates, Unless we see what, unless we are prepared to collaborate with the police more, we're not going to get the kind of reduction that we, we want to see. Um, I believe that the police are trying to find a way to make sure that there's a degree of, the, 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 not a degree, that there's absolute confidentiality with the kind of collaboration that is needed. The United Kingdom, uh, by extent, the governor is really responsible for, for national security. National security. Yes. So it's his responsibility. But we can't leave it up to him. It's, 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 it's our country. When we have this kind of crime, um, <clears throat> all of us live in fear. Uh, the people who come here as tourists, they come here because they consider the country to be still safe. And let me say, it's relatively, a, it is a still one of the safest places to be. Correct. Right? And I don't, people, people tend to say sometimes, oh, it's criminals killing each other. No, 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 no. I don't believe in that. I think we need to find a way to stop the crime, stamp it out, and get back to the peaceful country that we have always been. When we, when we talk about, about crime also, we, we cannot be, be dealing with it lightly. So when, when criminals are, are, are convicted, they should pay the price for conviction. You know, we like to talk about it whenever we should we don't want to be a nanny state in mm -hmm. essence. Let us deal with crime head on and stamp it out. It's not what the BVI is about and we need to fix it. All right. We are heading to the polls and in the final analysis, the people will choose. Why should the people select you as their candidate of choice? The people of the BVI should select me as their candidate of choice because I have the experience, I have the competence, I have the strength to assist with the change that is needed in this country. Change is needed in the BVI. We were not able to touch on things like areas like infrastructure. Mm -hmm that is crumbling, that needs to be changed. We were not able to talk about even our city. That is also crumbling. When it's dry, it's a dust bowl. When it's wet, it's a mud pool. It's just like a huge parking lot. We need to change these things. Given my experience, Given my work as a, a, not just talking, I am a door run. I can do, I can make sure that this change happens. I can't do it on my own. Okay. 
I have to do it with my other colleagues. But I think I have the competence, I have the experience, as I've said before, and I have the strength to help to make that change happen and happen quickly. We need to stop the slide. We need to end the mediocrity that a lot of our young people have seen and have grown mm. up with. We need to turn this country around. I want to see a better BVI. I believe in a better BVI. And I do hope that the people of the BVI would see me worthy, would consider me to be worthy to help to represent this country. Thank you. I have to ask you a series of questions and you have the opportunity to say yes or no. Uh, if we can, we're almost out of time, but you can also elaborate on whether or not, when elected, you would support um, any of these. The legalization or decriminalization of marijuana? Decriminalization of marijuana, yes. Okay. The legalization of same-sex marriage? That is a matter for the people of the BVI to determine. This is a very religious community. We have to respect that and we should leave it up to the people of the BVI in a referendum to make that decision. Okay, the legalization of paramutual betting. Yes, I think it, it, it could be yes. Okay, and uh, abortion? Abortion, I see as entirely up to the woman. She should have the right to choose what to do with her own body and it's entirely up to her to decide whether or not she should have an, an abortion. There are other circumstances that, you know, like rape and so on, but generally I would say that it's entirely up to the woman to, to choose. Okay. What is your favorite Virgin Islands cuisine? Uh, I love a good pea soup, red pea soup with um, uh, dumplings with cornmeal though. I don't like white dumplings. Okay, so uh, milk or no milk? Uh, a tiny bit of um, evaporated milk. Okay, all right. <laughs> Do you have a favorite sister island? Virgin Gorda. Mm, all right. Virgin Gorda, it's so pretty. I just, I just love to go. It's not just the, the baths and so on. It's just a very relaxing and lovely place to go to. Okay. Do you have a favorite alcohol, local um, rum or drink, locally made? Uh, guava berry at Christmas, of okay. course. Um, there is a sour soap drink also that's, that's delicious. But it's high in calories. Okay, all right. So, so you're I, watching those I'm, calories. I'm not going to be drinking that every day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you could take one person from VA yesteryear to lunch, who would it be and why? It would be my my mother. Hmm. It would be my mother. As I said before, she worked so hard for us, and she instilled in us Ron that that love for. God first. She would wake us up at six in the morning and I, I, you're too young to, to do that. But she would wake us up, up, up at six in the morning and, and teach us the word of God. Mm. And she taught us that education was the only way out. Uh, I love her. I think of her every single day. And she was also a woman of, she just loved the BVI and she loved people of the BVI and I just wish she were here. I would take her to lunch. I would hug her. I would just Understood. be with her. Understood. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for the conversation. And thank you for exercising your democratic right uh, and putting yourself forward for the next general elections. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. You're most welcome. Viewers, you have heard it here. And just for the record, we have sat down with Mrs. Lorna Smith OBE, an at-large candidate on the National Democratic Party ticket. Have a beautiful rest of the day. Bye-bye. One. Uh. Yep, that's me.
you're probably wondering how I got here. My name is Kamal Haynes. Most of you know me from 284 News, but now you get to see me in a different light on my very own show called Health is Well. We have Joel Turnbull. I don't want you to arch your back when you're pulling down. Milton McLean. First of all, right, your, your footwork. Stephen Payne. That was a 9 out of 10. I know you got the service down back. Steve Augustine. You did a pretty hard workout today, so perhaps. And as you can see, it's actually <laughs> impacted my Lonzo Boys. Taekwondo. Adam Morrells. I'll speak as if you're an absolute beginner. I uh, am an absolute beginner. You are an absolute beginner. And Seth Graham. It bites. It will bite. Everything bites. <laughs> get your water, get your fruits and veggies and experience a wealth of knowledge about getting healthy.